Hello everybody. In parts two and six of this series on projectile motion, I mentioned that if you launch a projectile at two angles that add up to 90 degrees, that their ranges will be the same. So almost 30 years ago, Jason MacArthur, a student of mine, made this title page where it says, and as you can see, class, the two darts did indeed come to rest at the, in the same general area. And he was referring to that fact that I just mentioned. He submitted an excellent assignment. I'm also wearing my high school t-shirt because we had a racing car, if you can believe it, driven by one of the tech teachers, which was very successful in its day. But today I want to talk about the so-called monkey gun. Imagine a gun being aimed directly at a monkey hanging in a tree. When the gun is fired, the monkey anticipates the shot and lets go at exactly the same time, so he starts to fall. Now the bullet can pass below the original height of the monkey on the way up, or it could pass below the original height of the monkey on the way down, depending on the original speed of the gun or of the bullet. If it's really fast, the bullet will still be on the way up. If it's not so fast, the bullet will be on the way down. This then is the vertical component of the original velocity as we talked about in a previous video. I'll call it V1 vertical. It changes immediately due to gravity, it decreases, but originally it's represented by this vector right here. The gun is a, at a height little h above the ground. The monkey is, a, is at a height capital H above the ground. The distance from the gun to the tree is d. So the most famous equation that we're going to be dealing with today is that the final position vertically of an object or the final height is based on the original height or vertical position plus the original vertical velocity times the time plus one half the accelerating times the time, time squared. So t will depend on the speed of the bullet. I'll put the t up in the air here somewhere because it's the time in the air. So let's analyze this for both the bullet and the monkey to find out if the bullet goes above the monkey, below the monkey, or if it hits the monkey, what's your gut feeling? Will the bullet go above, below, or through the monkey? If, once again, the monkey lets go at the same instant the bullet is fired. Well, for the bullet, the original vertical position is, as we said, h. And now we have to calculate this distance here. These are all distances, because you can only add distances. So speed times time gives, gives you distance. This vertical initial velocity times the time in the air will give you the distance from here up to the height of the monkey originally because in the absence of gravity, the bullet will travel in a straight line. <clears throat> straight line. So that is simply going to be h minus little h, this distance from here to here. The acceleration due to gravity is minus g, so that's minus g over 2 times t squared. And you can see that these h's cancel, so that's h minus g over 2 times t squared. Now, what about the monkey? For the monkey, it's going to be equal to the original height, which is capital H, plus the original vertical velocity of the monkey, which is zero because it's just sitting there 
and it lets go. And then we have the same term here. So minus g over 2 times t squared. That 0 doesn't make any difference. So what do you know? These are the same. So the monkey will be right here or right here, depending on the original speed of the bullet. And it's going to go right through the gut of the monkey. Remember I asked you what your gut feeling was? Well, there it is. In conclusion, I've got another title page to show you from the same assignment. Do you recognize the monkey? That's a picture taken from the yearbook. And it says, can the laws of physics save the endangered hush monkey? That would be me. And all I could say was, let's try it. Thanks for watching. That concludes this series. We'll see you soon with another topic. All the best.